Welcome to Tuesdays with the Pilgrim. Today we continue our journey with Christian in Chapter 7, Parts 1, 2, and 3. Let's get to it. Chapter 7, Part 1. Christian and Faithful Meet on the Way. Now as Christian went on his way, he came to a little hill placed purposely so that pilgrims could have a view of what lay ahead of them. So Christian went up the hill, and from there he recognized Faithful journeying not far in front of him. Then Christian called, Hello! Hold up there! Wait, and I will be your companion. At that, Faithful turned around and looked. Christian called again, Wait! Wait until I catch up with you! But Faithful answered, No! I am running for my life from the one who is after me. At this, Christian became determined and put all his strength into catching up. He quickly reached Faithful and even ran beyond him so that at last he was first. Then he smiled proudly because he had outrun his brother. While still gloating, however, Christian failed to watch his step, and suddenly he stumbled and fell. He was unable to get back up to his feet until Faithful came to help him up. Then I saw in my dream that they went on together in brotherly love, sharing with each other all about what had happened to them on their pilgrimages. Christian began by saying, Faithful, my brother, whom I honor and love, I am glad I have caught up with you, and that God has so unified our spirits that we can walk on as companions on this pleasant path. Part 2. News from Home Dear friend, said Faithful, I have desired your company ever since leaving our town, but since you left ahead of me, I was forced to come much of the way alone. How long did you stay in the city of destruction before you set out after me on your pilgrimage? asked Christian. Until I could stay no longer, for soon after you left, there was a great deal of talk that in a short time our city would be burned to the ground by fire from heaven. Really? Did your neighbors say this? Yes, it was in everyone's mouth for a while. What? Didn't anyone but you come away from there to escape the danger? As I said, there was a great amount of talk, but I don't think they strongly believed it, for in the heat of the debate, I heard some of them speaking derisively about you and your desperate journey. That is what they called your pilgrimage. But I believed, and I still do, that the fire and brimstone will fall from above to destroy our city. Therefore, I have made my escape. Did you hear any talk about neighbor pliable? asked Christian. Yes, I did, Christian. I heard that he followed you until he came to the slough of despond where some have said he fell in. He didn't want anyone to know this, but I'm sure that's the kind of dirt he was covered with. And what did the neighbors say to him? He has been greatly ridiculed by all sorts of people since his return. People mock and despise him, and he cannot even find employment. Now he's seven times worse off than if he had never gone out of the city. But why are they so much against him? since they have also despised the way he abandoned. Oh, they say, hang him. He's a turncoat. He wasn't true to what he professed. I think God has stirred up enemies against him. They hiss at him and scorn him because he abandoned the way. Were you able to talk with him at all before you left? asked Christian. I met him once in the streets, but he quickly looked away and crossed to the other side obviously feeling ashamed of what he had done, so I didn't get a chance to speak to him, said Faithful. Well, said Christian, when I first set out, I had great hopes for that man, but now I fear he will perish along with the city when it is destroyed. For it has happened to him according to the true proverb, a dog returns to its vomit, and a sow that is washed goes back to her wallowing in the mud. Yes, I fear this too, but who can thwart the inevitable consequences of one's own foolish choices? Part 3. Faithful's Confrontation with Temptation, Wanton. 
Well, faithful my neighbor, let's talk about matters of a more immediate concern to our own lives. Tell me about the things you've met so far in the way. I know you've had some interesting experiences. If not, it would indeed be a marvel. I escaped the slough that you fell into, and I reached the gate without much danger. But I did encounter someone whose name was Wanton. She made every effort to allure and snare me. Oh, it is good you escaped her net. Joseph was severely tested by her. He escaped her like yourself, but it nearly cost him his life. What did she do to you? Unless you have already met her, you cannot imagine what a seductive tongue she has. She pressured me severely to turn aside with her, promising me all kinds of pleasure and contentment. She didn't promise you the pleasure and contentment of a clear conscience, did she? No, you know what I mean, only the pleasure and contentment that come from the gratification of carnal and fleshly desires. Thank God you escaped your snare. He who is under the Lord's wrath will fall into it. Well, I don't know if I fully escaped or not. But why would you say this, asked Christian? I trust you didn't consent to her desires. No, I didn't defile myself. I remembered an old writing I had seen that reads, She leads you down to death and hell. So I shut my eyes because I didn't want to be enticed by her seductive looks. She cursed at me, and then I went on my way. And that's the end of our reading for today. Next week, we'll pick up with Chapter 7, Part 4, and following. Until then, take care, stay safe, and God bless.